Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast today. Attorney Tim Misney is here to talk about personal injury law and why he is so passionate about his profession. Later on, we'll hear from Jerry Blair and Laura Young. They'll talk about their organization, which helps women with breast cancer. And later on the broadcast today, the Cleveland Metro Parks CEO, Brian Zimmerman, will tell us about the mission of the Cleveland Metro Parks and the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo. We've got a good broadcast today for you, but don't we always? Good morning. I'm Leon Bibb. This is Kaleidoscope. And so we begin with Tim Misney. Attorney, law offices up Tim Misney. Good to have you with us, Tim. It's, you know, it's always a privilege when I could sit next to a Cleveland icon and a Hall of Famer, man. Oh, you're too, you're too kind. You're too kind. You're the icon. Uh, you're the guy. You're Mr. Cleveland. Who, who's calm. This is, a, this is a love fest we got going. <laughs> this is the guy who says, we'll make them pay. Yes, sir. I mean, that, that's, been your, that's been your profession. When, when did you come up with, with, that, with that thought? With that? I, I didn't come up with a branding. A friend of mine about 10 years ago, who's a Hollywood producer, uh, Eric Manis. Yeah. And uh, I told him I was shooting some new commercials. And he yeah. said, how about if I come in town and shoot the commercials? for you. I said, man, you're way too busy for this. He said, no, I want to come in. So he came in and the night before we shot our commercials, we're out to dinner and I said, what do you think it's going to be? He said, I got it. I got it. It's going to be Misney makes some pay. And I said, well, do you think we could shoot some alternate commercials that are less in your face? Yeah. And he said, don't tell me how to do what I do. I don't tell you how to practice yeah. law. So it's a great hook because it sums up what we do. And that's your passion. Yes, sir. You've got a passion for personal injury law. Yes. Tell me about that when you develop. Man, it goes way back, way back. Uh, I was seven years old, and my, uh, my mom's mom uh, took me downtown to the Terminal Tower. And we walked in, and uh, she pointed up to the concourse. And, you know, when you're walking, you see a, a beautiful, magnificent gold concourse. And she said, Timo, do you see this place? I said, yeah. She, uh, I said, who lives here? She said, no, sweetheart, no one lives here. Lawyers have offices here. And someday, if you work real hard and study real hard, you'll have an office here, too, because there will always be people that need you. And she said, your grandfather helped build this place. And the story was my grandfather was an immigrant um, worker from uh, Croatia. He was a, a bricklayer and he was working on Tower City Center and one day tragically the scaffolding collapsed and he fell to his death. So growing up I heard the stories of my mom being raised without a father and how difficult it was and all that my grandmother got was his last paycheck and she she was a great lady she took in laundry during the day cleaned offices at night she raised three wonderful kids. So Early on, when she said, Timo, you're going to be a lawyer to help people, I was seven years old. I said, okay, Grandma, now could I have my roasted cashews? So early on, I had a, a good idea. You keep that in mind, the story of your grandmother All getting only your grandfather's last paycheck. Right. That goes through your mind when people come to you and say, hey, I've been done and in justice. Tim Misney, can you help me? Every time. And what she said, there will always be people that need me. That resonates in my mind all the time because... Unfortunately, corporations put profit over safety. And when you do that, there's always going to be victims. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, what we do, we come in at a very bad time. Really, people are at the lowest ebb of their life. Their life has been turned upside down, and everything good has been shaken up. When do you know, when, and we got three minutes remaining, when do you know that uh, you need to go see a personal injury lawyer? I tell you, anytime something bad happens in a personal injury, somebody is made a victim you need to give me a call because in my specialty, catastrophic injury cases, medical malpractice, birth injury cases, oftentimes, Leon, people are told by healthcare professionals that the tragedy that befell them could not have been avoided. And in fact, that's not true. They, it could be avoided. And Absolutely. so you're gonna, your goal is we'll see what we can do. Maybe we can make them pay. Well, my goal is really twofold. Number one, you know, to make them pay, but it goes much deeper than that. What we do is we hold people accountable that have exposed us to unnecessary harm and danger. And by doing that, we oftentimes change policy so that the tragedy that befell my client hopefully 
will never happen to someone again. I want to put a phone number on the screen where you can contact him, Ms. Nia, 855 uh, MIS. Well, that, that's, yeah, 855 MISNY. Right. 855 MISNY. You see it on the screen there. Or you can go to MISNYLaw.com. MISNYLaw.com. Is there a statute of limitations on Absolutely. this? Absolutely. Absolutely. In most negligent cases, Land, there's a two year statute. But in negligent medical cases, medical malpractice, there's a one-year statute. So I advise people when something happens, don't wait, give me a call. And you were giving phone numbers before, and I'll yeah. tell you this, that if someone calls, they get Tim Misney. And if I take their case, every one of my clients gets my personal direct dial cell phone number so they can reach me 24-7. We have really gotten into a period of, uh, of uh, some say, a litigious society. There's mm -hmm. a lot of legal stuff going on. Do right. you see that as increasing? Unfortunately, I do, as, as I said a moment ago, because when corporations put profit over safety, you're going to have big problems, and that seems to be the case, and it's getting worse. You bring a lot of personality to your commercials now. I mean, you do your own commercials, you look straight in that camera, and you say, we'll make them pay. I mean it. I mean, you mean it. I do mean you, it. You took a little, there's a little bit of Hollywood in you too, isn't there? <laughs> but that's okay, well, isn't it? Yeah. You, you, you got to convey the message, and I think people pick up when you're genuine. You know, I like you love Cleveland. I like you love what I do for a living. And so it makes it easy to say that I will make them pay because their problem becomes my problem. And you've taken that story that your grandmother told you about your grandfather falling to his death while building Terminal Tower. That's right. And she didn't get anything but his last paycheck. That's right. That's that, right. That's, it. that's in the back of your mind all the time. Every single time I take on a wrongful death. My specialty are catastrophic injury wrongful yeah. death cases. And when somebody is telling me that, I tell them I could relate. You know, I could feel your pain because, you know, when a tragedy happens, it doesn't just happen to the individual, Leanne, it happens to the whole yeah. family. The whole family is affected, and many times it's affected for generations. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, my Good friend. Good to see you, my friend. This is Mr. Thank you very right much. here. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thank you, babe. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back in just a moment. We're going to talk about a luncheon hosted by minority women with breast cancer right after this. Welcome back to Kaleidoscope. Glad to have you with us. Breast cancer survivor Jerry Blair is the founder of the Minority Women with Breast Cancer Uniting. And with her this morning is Laura Young, who's also a cancer survivor. They're going to discuss the upcoming luncheon as well as services provided by the organization Minority Women with Breast Cancer Uniting. Jerry Blair next to me, Laura Young sitting on the outside there. Good to have you both with us. Thank you. Thank Talk you. Talk about the mission. Uh, uh, you, Jerry, you're founder of Minority Women with Breast Cancer Uniting. Yes. What, what's the mission? The mission is awareness, education, and support for minority women with breast cancer. And helping them along through and all of this. Yes. Through the process and even after. Yes. After, after. Yes. How are you doing? With I you? am doing good. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a 28-year breast cancer survivor mm -hmm. and doing well. And that is so encouraging for people out there who have dealt with this disease of breast cancer. Yes, yes. You brought with you Laura Young, who's a breast cancer survivor and a member of the Minority Women with Breast Cancer United. Good to have you with us. Thank and you. My, and my sister. And your sister. Yes. So we, we got sisters. Jerry Blair and Laura Young. Yes. Sisters in more <laughs> ways than one. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Laura, how long have you been surviving all of I'm this? I'm a survivor of breast cancer for 31 years. And you are still going strong I'm and still doing well. I'm still going strong and doing well. What do you tell people who deal with this, this disease of breast cancer? First thing I say, look at me. I am a survivor. You can be a survivor. And just eat healthy, pray a lot, and you'll be okay. And stay in close contact with the medical people who, right. are, who are treating you and, and join organizations like, like this. us. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about what breast cancer, uh, minority women with breast cancer uniting. Well, well, what is it that, that you're going to do now, that, that you do to help women through this process? Well, we always tell people about family history. Family history is very important because I come from a family with a history that we have over 20 women from our immediate family yeah. that were diagnosed with breast cancer. My mom died from this disease. We tell them that they must get a yearly um, 
a checkup from their physician, do yearly uh, mammograms, and do yearly uh, mm -hmm. self breast exam so examinations periodically right. and you can right. do that right in the right right in, in your own home in your shower right. or wherever but they must be in tune with their body uh, eat healthy exercise and just be aware of your body uh, we go out into the community and we just let people know that there is life after breast cancer mm -hmm. that you must have that support system and that's what we are all about support you're going to talk about this at your annual luncheon. You've got something scheduled, my notes tell me, for Saturday, October the 5th yes. at Lander Haven. Yes. What happens on October the 5th at Lander Haven at 11 o'clock in the morning? Well, we have a keynote speaker, Dr. John um, Jasper, who is a surgeon who will be our keynote speaker. And he's from University Hospital. From University Hospital, who is a fantastic yeah. Uh, surgeon. Yeah. Laura, you, you, you're going to be there. What do you want people to take away from this event, uh, which, is, which is a fundraiser for your organization? Yes. What do you want people to take away from this event when they go there on Saturday, October the 5th at Lander Haven? Leon, there should be at least one thing that um, we do, they should know, is that we as an organization is there for them. We will help them through mm -hmm. the whole process. And most of all, listen to the doctor that is gonna be our speaker, that the, the final um, decision should be that they get a mammogram, mm -hmm. do exercise, health, um, see the doctor on a regular basis. And realize if and you've got breast cancer, it does not necessarily mean there is a death certificate Correct. around the corner. No. Not, 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 not because of that. Uh, are tickets available for this? This is the fundraiser, right? Yes. So we're trying to raise some Tickets money. are available. Well, let's, let's, let's raise a couple of bucks right <laughs> here. Right, right, let's talk about it. Uh, tickets are available. Uh, there is a number that they can call, which is 330-468-0235. We've got that on the air right now. And if you make a phone call to that number, you can you can get in line for your tickets. Yes. Once yes. again, this is going to be Saturday, October the 5th at Lander Haven, which is, a, 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 which is in Mayfield, uh, uh, May, Mayfield Heights. Yes. Uh, begins at 11 o'clock in the morning. The guest speaker is going to be Dr. John Jasper. He's division chief for general surgery at University Hospitals. Yes. What do we do with this money that we raise now? Uh, we do services. We help uh, women out with their rent, utility bills, just services that people that are in need, uh, women that because are in need. When they're, when they're dealing with these medical issues, they've got all these other things. Mm -hmm. Life goes on around them, That's the mortgage right. and the rent and That's the right. grocery bills yes. and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So you just want them to know that 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 you are with them. That's the sisters right. are with them. That's Literally, right. You, got two sisters <laughs> you both are survivors. Twenty-eight yes. years for you on breast cancer. Twenty-eight survivors. years for me. And and thirty years for you. Thirty-one, yes. 31 yes. years. Yes. Neither one of you look a day over thirty-five. <laughs> so you work that out. <laughs> good to have you on the broadcast. It is wonderful. Let's for give you it a good plug right us. here. Yes. Saturday, October the fifth. Executive caterers at Lander Haven starts at eleven o'clock. And tickets yes. are uh, what? What are tickets cost? Forty dollars. Forty dollars. And for that forty dollars, you get so much more. Yes. Three three zero four six eight zero two three five. You see at the bottom of the screen more information. We wish you well. Good to see you, Jerry. Thanks. Good nice see seeing you too. Good to see you, Thank Laura. you. You too. Be well, my friends. Thanks. Okay. Well, bye bye. Taking a break right now. I'll be right back. We're going to talk about the Cleveland Metro Parks with its CEO back right after this. Thank you. <laughs> You're in touch with Kaleidoscope and always good to have you with us today. The 100th anniversary of the Cleveland Metro Parks is approaching and here with me this morning is the CEO of the Metro Parks, Brian Zimmerman. He's going to share his thoughts about the Metro Parks history and a vision for the Cleveland Metro Parks and about the zoo as well. We'll talk about all of that. How are you doing, Brian? Very well. Thank you very much. It's hard to believe 100 years worth of stewardship in Northeast Ohio. Uh, the park system's grown from the original uh, vision of 
Bill Stinchcomb and some uh, uh, local residents that got together in Rocky River uh, to bring together what we're going to be celebrating in 2017. So many wonderful things happen in this town in that period from, uh, from 1910 to, to 1920. In that time period, so much happened, and the Metro Parks was one of those things. What, what do you envision now? You've been, the, been the, uh, the CEO of the Metro Parks now for less than four years. What do you envision for it? Well, it's really interesting to see the, the foundation was set so long ago. And uh, Clevelanders, I'm often reminded that, you know, they say, well, they you know, create a plan and they put it on the shelf. Well, I can tell you unequivocally that the original vision that was put forth is really over 85% complete. And now with the most recent acquisition of the lakefront parks really coming to yeah. uh, the fruition and adding to the complement of the uh, 17 reservations, adding the 18th with the lakefront reservation has really been part of where uh, Cleveland uh, Metro Park really anticipated being at this time frame. You're taking over that part uh, uh, the, the, around Gordon Park, Gordon Park, uh, Euclid Beach Park. Villa Angela, Sergeant. Euclid, Wildwood. All, all right on the lake. Yeah, over 14 miles worth of shoreline has really become part of the family, including Huntington Beach. Uh, we have a long-standing history in this community since 1927 of managing lakefront parks. Uh -huh. And how's the money coming in? I mean, people are always passing the levies for you to continue to do what you, you've, you've got to, you've got to be very appreciative of Northeast Ohio. When doing homework on Cleveland, you can't find a better place. Uh, the competitive advantage that Cleveland brings and what Clevelanders, you know, I don't, there's not anyone that I meet that doesn't have a story about Cleveland Metro Parks and certainly the financial stewardship with 17 clean audits in a row uh, and our levy campaign coming up this fall. Uh, we have lived uh, on a 10-year levy cycle for the last 20 years and we have never borrowed money in our history and so that's a really interesting part of our financial stewardship uh, to coupled with our mission of conservation, education and recreation. How big of a footprint are we talking about when we look at the Cleveland Metro Park system? Well it's, it's, it touches, it's with Within uh, 10 minutes of everybody's front door. It's really interesting to see over 42 communities are served, or the 60 some here in Cuyahoga County. And then Hinckley Township is really the pendant that hangs off the bottom. Uh, and with these acquisition of these lakefront far parks, it really you know capitalizes on uh, the ability to connect with water here in, in Cleveland. I like the way you make a reference to the, the pendant that hangs off the bottom of the necklace. When we when we look at that Metro Parks, it's it, it's like a like a like a, a a necklace, the emerald necklace around. Northeast Ohio, kind of going from Lake to, to Lake Erie, Lake Erie to, to Lake Erie, and around to the southern part of, uh, of Northeast Ohio. Well, to see his original vision really be uh, applied in action, and to see the the, the families, we have over 6,000 education programs that come through a year. We have a world-class zoo, um, which sits right in the middle of the uh, within five minutes of downtown. We have over one million annual visits at the zoo each year. I know you had a chance to visit with our outgoing director, Steve Taylor, and. Uh, uh, just to see the passion of the citizens that come through uh, and the intrigue and, and the wonderment of, of the animals and the stewardship that we provide um, is truly a connection to our community that's not lost. Tell me about a little bit more about that zoo. We've got two minutes remaining. Tell me a little bit more about that zoo. That rainforest that you put in a few years ago, that has been a huge draw, hasn't it? Without a doubt. I mean, in, in Northeast Ohio, having moved here from Milwaukee, uh, you know, the weather, the climate's very similar. And to be able to have uh, the rainforest, you know, during our winter months or our less uh, less uh, favorable months is, is certainly a nice addition. You also complement it with our primate cat and aquatic up on top. And then really culminating with the, the African elephant crossing. Uh, it's the one of a kind in the country. It's the first outdoor exhibit that has uh, achieved the LEED certification. And that's truly a testament to the sustainable message that we provide every day in our stewardship uh, of the 23,000 acres. Among my favorite places in the entire world is the Cleveland Metro Parks. You brought you brought a, a shirt with you there that we want to we want. Well, this is this is really this is a gift to you. This is actually a partnership with what we've been uh, doing here in, in Northeast Ohio. Uh, it's an American made t-shirt. It's actually printed uh, here in Lakewood, Ohio. It's part of the Cleveland clothing line here on the back. Uh -huh. And uh, this is a gift for oh, you. Thank you. you uh, know, I'll, wear, I'll wear it proudly. We know you love the Cleveland Metro Parks oh, as do in. our over 16 million visitors every yeah. year. I was in, you, we were, you know, I've been going to the Cleveland Metro Parks ever since I was a kid. I don't even remember the first time I went. We would always picnic in the Metro Parks, certainly in the, we'd go to the, the Euclid Creek area when, when I was a kid growing up, and we horse, we had Boy Scout camp. We would go out to the Metro Parks, and my family and I would go out there, and I'm still going out there, sometimes even if it's just a drive through just to relax. 
Well, there's really something for everyone in the Metro Park system, whether you look at the horseback riding, golf, uh, trail riding. Over 76% of our users identify with you know some sort of trail experience or just being able to go through, as you said, as a leisure travel through the Emerald Necklace. You can get lost yeah. for hours. In, in, our our in our final 15 seconds, this is a wonderful job for you to come to Cleveland and to ha and be a part of the Metro Parks. Well, thank you very much, and remember us on Election Day on November 5th. We will remember on November the 5th, Election Day, vote for the Metro Parks levy. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Good to have you with us. Brian Zimmerman, <laughs> CEO of the Cleveland Metro Parks. Thank One you. of the good guys in Cleveland, too. Glad to have you here. Coming up next, we're going to have the Morning Exchange segment. Marsha Mockaby of the Urban League brings her thoughts on what's going on in the community after this. Time for the Morning Exchange segment of our broadcast, as we call it. Here's Marsha Mockaby of the Urban League. She's always got something on her mind. I, I sure do. <laughs> as a matter of fact, so many things on my mind, sometimes it's hard to sleep. But really glad to be here today. And one of the things I want to talk about is uh, where, kind of where we're going now after we've had this great uh, March on Washington event over the last few weeks and so forth. Now it's really time for an action agenda. Yeah. So one of the things that we're going to be do is we're going to be sharing with the public this great document that has come out of the black leaders yeah. uh, across the country who have put together uh, this, ev this uh, document that talks about what the priorities are in the African-American community. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to be sharing that with our listening audience and uh, talking about what our, uh, how we're going to be focusing on those issues. And you and many other leaders are putting this document together right now? Actually, it happened at the national level, the National Action Network, National Urban League, and the National NAACP leaders. It happened at the national level. We're going to implement it at the local level. And I know if the, I know that you're already looking at what Cleveland can do Absolutely. and Northeast Ohio, how it can fit into this national document. Absolutely. That is what Dr. King would be doing were he still with us. Absolutely. Of course, his spirit is very much with Absolutely. us. That is what Dr. King would be talking about right today, wouldn't he? That's right. And he would say there's got to be an action agenda. The marching is fine. The commemoration is fine. But we got to continue the dream and we need an action plan and an action agenda in order to accomplish that. Did all of this kind of uplift your spirits as we looked at Dr. King's speech 50 years later? Oh, it did, Leon. I'll tell you, it was kind of hard for me to keep it together last Wednesday yeah. because there was so much, and just the support from the community and the feeling in the room and in the march and in the rally, it was just something I would not experienced for a long time. Well, we are glad that you experienced it, and so did I. I guess we experienced <laughs> it all together. We did. You and I are children of the Civil Rights Movement. We certainly are, and we're going to keep yeah. it moving. Keep it moving. <laughs> That's going to do it. Be well, everybody. Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5.